those beautiful mountains the targets are being changed we're ready for the gold medal match here in the men's team event on recurve sunday at the third stage of the hyundai archery world cup Well, here's the tail of the tape and how the teams got to this session. Italy down the bottom took out France and then the USA, the People's Republic of China, beat Chinese Taipei in a tight one in the quarterfinals before a confident 5-3 victory over Ukraine. So it's time for the gold medal match here in the men's team event. The teams are waiting in the wings, so let's go down to the range. And now, please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the Recurve Men's Team Gold Medal Match. On target number two, representing Italy, Marco Gagliazzo. Uh, here they are, it's a strong Italian team. David Pasqualucci. David Pasqualucci there. Final one to be announced uh, along with Mario Galeazzo and Mauro Nespoli. It's a much younger team from China here as they just lay down their bows. On target number one, representing the People's Republic of China, Ding Yong. Oh, Ding Yong. Ding Feng Hao and we Xiao Xuan. Two 18 year olds and a 23 year old. He shot a 1993 in the ranking round and came through as the 13th seed to battle their way through the field. Italy, well, they shot a 2004 in the ranking round to be ranked 10th. So uh, it just goes to show you don't have to be a high seed after the ranking round to get your way through to the gold medal match. Both these teams have faced shoot-offs on their route here. I wonder if we're going to get another one in this gold medal match. It's time to find out as we watch Italy take on China for the men's team gold here on Recurve Sunday. No, 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 no. either side of the yellow ring and then they zone in on the 10 so a 28 out of a 30 not a bad start for Italy in a match that sees experience take on youth nice. Two lines for the Chinese team, mirroring the Italian start. Well, it's a trio of nines. Very serious looking Chinese delegate in the crowd there looking on. Nine. 
Caliazzo looking very cheery most of the time, but when he's on the range, very straight faced. It's just a nine party right now. Yeah, those three nines from the Italians mean there is an opportunity here for China. They can score a maximum of 57. And lots of support in the crowd for the Chinese team. Yeah. Mandarin. Pretty poor, to be honest. <laughs> I think that was words of encouragement. Oh, just dropping into the eight when there was a big opportunity there for China. And eight at the end means they're tied on points with Italy in the first set and they'll share the set points. I thought China had found the center then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After you called a party of nines from Italy, the three nines at the end, left an opportunity. And uh, the opportunities do present themselves, but archery is all about taking those opportunities. And it looked like China were going to do that. Here's the first ten, the fourth arrow, followed by the next one straight in the ten. Confidence riding high, and then this. It's unfortunate. He is grouping a little bit low, though, so maybe a little bit of adjustment there. Um, but good support there from uh, one of the coaches on the uh, Chinese team, really providing some support. It's a very young team from China um, against a very established team from Italy. You've got two team members who are on the team who won gold in the 2012 Olympic um, games here, and, and I think that they have quite a bit of experience on this Chinese team, but I don't think we should discount anybody in, in set play for sure. Yeah, interesting point. You know, having shot together for so long, they'll know each other so well, know when to provide encouragement and when not to. And they're teamed up with this youngster, David Pascalucci, to get us underway in the second set of the gold medal match. Didn't seem super happy with that, a little bow quando, as I like to say, but uh, really close arrow there. I think it might be a measure. Maybe they're going to make it a 10 party this time. To the commentator. Sorry, Italy. Well, just as the Chinese are starting to get lots of vocal support, Marin Espoli looked there to uh, encourage his teammates to cheer them on a bit. And uh, an eight for the start for China is not what they're looking for. Now require two tens to stay in touch halfway through the set. Well, only trailing by at the single point, uh, but that's subject to that first arrow, which, as Mackenzie said, will go to a measure. Potentially Italy leading by two at this stage. Yes, bravo. Some more Boquando, but into the ten ring. 
in case people haven't heard you use that term before, what do you mean? Uh, I make a joke that, that when you swing your bow to help the arrow into the middle, I call that bow quando. Um, it's it's not a real thing, but it is when when you try to influence the arrow into the center of the target. Definitely not looking happy with that, and that's why pulling it into the eight. So Italy could have put that out of reach there. China, well, if they get to a perfect score, they've taken the points. Yeah. Now remember, Italy are notionally... Excuse me, Italy are notionally on 55 points. They could be marked up to 56. So two more tens will definitely put this out of reach. And there's one of them. But a nine might be enough. Gets the nine. So China are on 56, but now the measure is really important on that first arrow. Yeah, X, X, 10. So 10, 10, 9, 9, 9, 8 for target 2. Well, the target judge has made his decision and uh, Italy have been marked a nine for the first arrow. So China do indeed take the set points in the second set and lead by 3-1 in this gold medal match. And they're looking pretty pumped up, Mackenzie. Yeah, I think they're pretty excited going into this, uh, this next end. If they win it outright, they win the entire match. Um, I think Italy's going to give them a hard time to be able to do that, but um, it's definitely a close, tight match right now. So Italy trailing. Lead out again with David Pasqualucci. <laughs> Crucial to start well here. Yeah. He really likes to shoot liners. Liners is a is a term that we use that's you know really close to the to the line, potentially in, potentially out. Well, if you hit the line in archery, you are marked up for the higher score. I do know that in Mandarin they, they said Jio, which I think means let's go, come on, an encouragement. Not just a, expert, a linguist too. And you bring in your own Mackenzieisms as well, you know, the mm -hmm. whole package. Eight. Dropping in to the eight, which means that a ten will be required from China to draw level here. Eight. 
just drifting off to the right hand side here do you think the wind's picked up a little bit i think it could have and i think in the adverse happened um, usually when the wind picks up you drift in the direction that the wind is pushing you but i think what happened with italy is they aimed off too far and so they are into the wind side um, i think for david in the first arrow he may have not really liked the shot that he made um which makes arrows drift further but um it's left the door open for china very unorthodox process here and it's an eight so a 10 required to win the match here can China capitalize here. Oh, oh wow. lovely shot from Wei Shaoshuan there. He needed a 10 to take it, and he absolutely nailed it down the middle to the delight of the Chinese officials in the crowd. They're very happy because they have taken the gold medal here in Antalya in the recurve men's team event. They really are very delighted. Uh, Feng Hao, just 18 years old, along with the anchor man, as confirmation comes from the target judge of the Chinese win. And Feng is 18. Wei Xiaohuan, who also uh, is 18 years old, shot the 10 to win it as we get confirmation that those two and Ding Yi Liang, who's, well, the elder statesman at 23 years old, uh, they have taken the world by storm here in Turkey.